You feel like Superman. You're stronger than last time. Every time you go to the gym, you seem to lift more weight and you're putting on muscle faster than you ever dreamed possible. But the problem with SARMs is there are negative consequences of taking them. Coach Greg, in today's video, it's all about SARMs. Depending on who you ask, SARMs have either gotten a good or a bad rap. Some people say they're safer than steroids. Some people say they're worse. Some people say they're no good, they're ineffective, that they're horrible for you. And others say that they're actually a safer alternative than steroids. But the problem is they're both right depending on what you're taking, what you're comparing it to, the doses, and who you are as a person. And I could get technical and talk about how SARMs are selective androgen receptor modulators, but do you really care? Or do you just want to know the basics? What do they do? What do they not do? The dangers, the myths, things you need to know, and so on. And I can tell you, I've personally used them for years. I've used almost all of them, done multiple cycles, and I've coached thousands of people who've used either steroids and or SARMs. And so I do have a lot of experience when it comes to taking SARMs. But before we get into it, I have to remind you, I'm not a doctor, and so I can't give you medical advice. And so this is just information, and my opinion is with knowledge comes power. If you don't learn about it, don't talk about it, people, they're still going to do it. I'd rather people learn more about it, get the knowledge, gather some understandings, and later in life, when they're an adult, they can come to their own decisions. Should you use it? Should you not use it? But let me remind you, SARMs are not for human consumption. Although people are using them, they're technically not made for human use. They're not currently illegal in my country, but I can't guarantee whether or not it's legal in yours. The first thing I want to talk about is that if you're a teen or perhaps in your early 20s, SARMs have been shown to dramatically increase your TikTok following. And I'm being sarcastic, but many teens, guys in their early 20s, they compare themselves to the physiques they see on social media and they feel inferior. They're thinking, I don't look like that. And so how am I going to? And so what do they do? They resort to taking PDs, steroids, and or SARMs in order to speed along the process. They want that physique, not tomorrow, but yesterday. And so many people, they simply say, no, you don't need them. You just put in the work and you can get the physique of your dreams. You just need to train harder than last time and train long enough and eat properly, get enough sleep, and you can develop a physique like that. The truth is you most likely can't. I'd rather be open and honest and tell people to have realistic goals, realistic expectations. And if you want to look like your favorite YouTube or social media star, chances are you're probably not going to achieve that. And I don't want to be discouraging. I simply want you to have realistic goals. And if your goal is to look like your favorite YouTuber, your favorite social media star, TikToker, chances are very unlikely that you're going to be able to do that. And so when you start training, expecting to put on two to three pounds of muscle a month, perhaps 20 plus pounds in a year, and you don't, you're gonna start thinking, well, I need to resort to SARMs and or steroids in order to get that physique that I want. And so I'm not going to BS you. I'm not gonna say that SARMs won't help you build muscle. They will. They do in fact work. All the SARMs that I've taken, for example, Osterine, Rad140, S4, LGD4033, they all help me put on a significant amount of muscle. And so you're thinking, well, why shouldn't we all use it then? If they do in fact work, why wouldn't we use it? But the problem with SARMs is there are negative consequences of taking them. And so those who are taking SARMs, they typically will do a cycle for eight to 12 weeks. And during that time, they feel, well, amazing. You feel like Superman. You're stronger than last time. Every time you go to the gym, you seem to lift more weight and you're putting on muscle faster than you ever dreamed possible. And I'm not gonna get into what doses should you take or which SARMs do what, which is the best one, the worst one. There's a ton of videos. I've done many of these in the past. But what I want you to know is what to expect after you stop. All good things come to an end. You can't take, well, you could, but be very unhealthy. You can't take SARMs forever. You can't take SARMs for 20 straight years. If you did, you're going to have a host of negative side effects. And so the problem isn't while you're taking the SARMs, it's once you stop. When you stop, all those gains, the pumps you got in the gym, the muscle that you put on, you're gonna lose a lot of those gains. How much? It depends. If you're past your genetic limit, you're probably gonna lose all of them. 
If you just started, perhaps you'll keep half. But what I can tell you, and I'm speaking from experience, is once you stop, you're immediately going to want to go back on. And so the issue isn't while you're taking them, although you could experience things like high blood pressure, increased cholesterol, lower testosterone levels. The main issues are when you stop. Once you stop taking them, your motivation to go to the gym, it's going to go down. You're not going to gain strength. You're in fact going to get weaker. Every time you go to the gym, you seem to lift one or two reps less on each and every set. It's not fun. The pumps, the size, the fullness, the size, the strength, it goes down. That shirt that you're wearing is going to feel a little bit looser. Even your body composition can go from being more muscle and less fat to quite the opposite. And so as soon as you go off, you're going to be thinking, I can't wait to start back on again. Even if you said, well, I'll just do one cycle. I'll add in 10, 20 pounds of muscle and then I'll stop. Problem is you won't want to stop. And these feelings you have when coming off of SARMs, they're made even worse if you don't do a proper PCT. If you are doing higher doses, especially if it's for longer periods of time, your testosterone levels could certainly be crashed. Oftentimes people will take SARMs, go get blood work. They'll notice their testosterone levels. They're in the tank, in the toilet. Sometimes like in Isaiah Miranda's case, far below the natural reference range. It may in fact suppress your testosterone even more than some steroids. And so what happens when you crush your natty test levels? Well, you feel like garbage. You can't sleep properly, no sex drive. Your ability to get the downstairs working, that can in fact stop. With the proper PCT, you're most likely gonna get it back, but not everyone does. And one of the main problems I've had to deal with in people who've taken SARMs and quit in the past is they can't get their libido back in order. They don't know what to do. They have to rely on Cialis, Viagra, and even with that, some, they cannot make it happen. And so although SARMs do in fact work, the problem is when you're not taking them, you're going to lose almost all, if not all of those gains. Not to mention, even while taking them, many people experience lower testosterone levels. Sure, you have size and strength, but perhaps your libido, it's in the toilet. When you're taking SARMs, your body thinks, well, you don't need testosterone anymore. You'll do just fine on those SARMs. We're going on vacation. So your balls shrink, you stop producing tests, and then with that, a host of negative side effects can occur. And once you go off that cycle, well, it's going to get worse and it can take months and or years to get it all back. And if you continue to do this for too many years, you perhaps will be like Coach Greg, needing HRT for the rest of your life. And so to me, the main issue is this, availability. It is so easy to get SARMs. When I was growing up, when I was your age, remember I'm 47 years of age. I didn't know what a SARM was. There were no SARMs. And steroids, hardly anyone had access to it. But now with social media, you can Google, hey, SARMs, how do I get it? And so now with such easy access, teenagers and kids, they're getting into things that they're not ready to take. They're not ready to make decisions that can impact them in a negative way for the rest of their lives. All they can think of is, I want to look like that guy right now. That guy has 100,000 followers on TikTok. I only have 1,000. I want 100,000. And if I can get shredded, look aesthetic, and do this pose, well, I'll be popular too. And the problem is they're partially right. We idolize certain people, certain physiques, the best of the best. You scroll through, you see someone, single digit body fat, and you say, I want to look like that guy right now. And they know if they take SARMs and or steroids, it's going to get them there that much quicker. That is in fact true. And to say it's not, well, that would be a lie. The problem is when you make that decision, especially at a young age, you're not ready to process what is it going to do to me down the road. And so you're thinking, I want to look like that. And maybe you do. Maybe you take SARMs and you do get that physique. Are you going to regret it five or 10 years later? The longer you wait, the better. My advice is try to do it natural. Remember, I did 42 competitions, 100% natural. Yeah, I did end up taking PDs but I trained natural for over 20 years. Have you trained natural for 20 years? Have you achieved your natural genetic limit? Or are you simply looking for that shortcut? Now, if you do end up taking SARMs, hopefully you're at least an adult. No teenager should be taking SARMs. But if you do make that decision, 
Always do the lowest dose that will make you happy. The lowest dose. Never start with a higher dose. Once you start high, you will not want to go down. Once you get used to a specific dose, the feeling you get, the amount of muscle that you're going to build, you're not going to want to diminish that. Think of it. If you gain 10 pounds of muscle in the first three months, are you then going to want to only gain five? Of course not. The longer you train, the longer you do SARMs, the less you're going to notice those gains. There's something known as newbie gains when you first start training, but there's also newbie gains to be made when taking SARMs and or steroids. And so the first cycle you take, you're going to make the biggest gains. After that, it's going to be harder and harder and harder. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you're not going to make any progress. And so if you start SARMs as a teenager and rely on them, perhaps you make gains for three years, then you'll be in your early 20s, unable to grow. You'll be trying everything under the sun, blast and test and trend, taking risk with your health, all in the pursuit of gaining a bit more muscle. And for what? You're thinking, oh, it's going to attract the girls. Girls will then like me. No, they won't. They don't care. And for the most part, the more muscle you have, the more shredded you are, all you're doing to impress is the boys. And so if you're just trying to impress a bunch of guys at the gym that say, hey, dude, you, you look massive. Well, that's what it's going to do. But if you're simply doing this to get girls to be attractive, to, to look better, you don't need them. They don't care if you're not 200 pounds of muscle. By following a good diet, eating healthy, using progressive overload, training for years, doing 150 minutes of cardio a week, you can be fit. And who doesn't find somebody who's fit to be attractive? You're putting in the work, you're training natural, you're progressing, although slowly, but who cares? You're being all that you can be, the best version of yourself, and if that girl that you like doesn't appreciate you, doesn't want you because of that, well, she's not the right girl for you in the first place. If somebody only wants you for your body, how long is it gonna last? It won't last forever. Just think, I'm gonna be myself and eventually that person, that person will come along. Hopefully you learned something. If you're on the fence of taking it and you're not sure, the answer is always no. If you're not 100% convinced that you should be taking this, then you shouldn't. There's too many negative consequences. It's not a decision that should be taken lightly. Before I go, I should remind you, if you have low testosterone, you're crash dieting, perhaps you've taken SARMs in the past, you could always use G-Test or 3-Test. This can help increase your natural testosterone production. It's not a PCT, it's not gonna replace one, but it can in fact improve your total and free testosterone. That coupled with a healthy diet, proper exercise, and a healthy body fat percentage, that is the most important thing you can do to have naturally high testosterone levels. Looking to purchase this or any other Harder Than Last Time products, please use code GREG, you'll get 10% off. Click the link in the description. Check out one of the two bloops, at least one. You don't have to watch them both. I'm not greedy. One video. Subscribe. Click the bell button. Comment for the algorithm. Write any questions you have about SARMs here. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And until next time, I am out.